thank you today, O oh God. Because there's nobody like you, O oh God. For you are a great God and greatly to be praised. How many are glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Amen. Oh, I got one of you. Hallelujah. At least one person glad to be in the house of the Lord Amen. today. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. How many of you know I didn't come here today to, to just condemn you today? Amen. Amen. But I came to get you to commit today. Mm -hmm. Commit to God most of all. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're talking today most about continuing our series on the miracles of God. We talked about the first miracle, which was what? Wine. wine. Turning the water into wine. Hallelujah. And it says even in the word that that was the first miracle. We talked about the second miracle, which was healing the noble son. Somebody paid attention, all right, which he said was the second miracle. That's in your word. Hallelujah. If you read your word, it will tell you that that was the second miracle. Hallelujah. But this miracle we're going to talk about today was when Jesus began to do his public ministry. Hallelujah. When he began to go into the synagogue. Hallelujah. You began to teach today. Hallelujah. But as I prepare you to go in there, how many of you know that the enemy will show up right here in the midst of us? Oh, oh yes, he will. Somebody brought him in today. Uh -oh. Amen. How many of you know that somebody wasn't even thinking about God before they got here? Come on. How many of you know that the enemy was whispering on the ear that let's not even go to church today? How many of you know even that even in the midst of us, hallelujah, that the enemy seems to want to take over our character and our behavior? He wants to implant something into your system to cause you not to even to respond to the caller that says stand and say hallelujah. Right, right. Amen. Uh oh. Amen. I didn't come to condemn, for there is no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. I just came to confirm some things and get you to commit to those things. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. How many young people know when you go to school, hallelujah, that there's always somebody creeping around trying to get in your bed, mm -hmm. trying to get stop everything you're doing, telling you don't look good, why you dress like that. How many of you know, even in school, that they try to get with our children? How many you know the world is always trying to get to go back to that system and go to talking about it, trying to stir you up, trying to push your little button? Even at work, you know, you got people that want to look at you different and want to talk to you different. Even at work, come on, everybody don't agree with you at work, hallelujah. Some people don't even care how you look, hallelujah, how you're dressed, hallelujah. They got something to say about the way you dress, hallelujah. Amen. Even when you put on a uniform, tell them that. Somebody got something to say about, hey, your uniform got a wrinkle on it. Why you got your name on the wrong side? They always checking us out, like, I don't care where you are. Even at school, now come on, children, hallelujah. Yes. You know how them children get on your nerves, hallelujah, get it working. You trying to do your best and here comes somebody talking about you ain't dressed right, you don't look right why you ain't smiling today mm -hmm. <laughs> alright pastor come on, come on see cause even when we come into the house of the Lord what we have to realize is that the enemy is always on his job, yes he, yes, he is. Is. yes he is he's always trying to get us to do something against what God has already set up for us to do so come on let us go to the word hallelujah, see we got everybody quiet today, hallelujah I'm going to get a hallelujah out before it's over with hallelujah. Because I'm going to preach hallelujah and say hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Today we're going to come from Mark today, hallelujah. hallelujah. Mark the first chapter beginning at the 21st verse going through the 28th verse, hallelujah. Just give me a little background on Mark. See, Mark structured his gospel around the various geographical movements of Jesus. And he climbed with his death and, and subsequently with the resurrection. But in his introduction... Mark begins to tell us about the public ministry of Jesus. Amen. The gospel may have viewed as two halves joined together by a hint that Peter's confession of Jesus and the Messiah and Jesus' first announcement of his crucifixion. Mark is the shortest gospel containing no genealogy and no accounts of the birth and the early judicial ministry of Jesus. It is the gospel of action moving rapidly from one scene to another. You'll find out that Mark didn't start off like everybody else. Matthew started out with the genealogy, and you won't find that in Mark. Mark went right into the public ministry of Jesus Christ. And guess where he takes us to? Come on, let us read. Let us go down that road with you. Let us go to Mark, first chapter, beginning at the 21st verse. Go ahead and read from it. And the word of God says, And they went into Capernaum, uh -huh. and straightway he on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and mm -hmm. taught. And taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine. Mm -hmm. For he taught them as one that had authority, 
and not as the scribes. Mm -hmm. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. Uh -huh. And he cried out, saying, let us alone, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou coming to destroy us? Mm -hmm. And know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. Mm -hmm. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. Mm -hmm. And they were all amazed. In so much that they question among themselves, saying, What thing is this? Mm -hmm. What new doctrine is this? <laughs> For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. The final verse, verse 28 says, mm -hmm. And immediately, immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region around about Galilee. Round about Galilee. Let me just take you to what the Message Bible says about it, because it kind of breaks it down just a little bit different for some of us in here. Verse 21 says, Then they went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath arrived, Jesus lost no time in getting to the meeting place. He spent there teaching. They were surprised at his teaching, saying, For right, so confident, so quibble, quoting like the religious scholars. Suddenly, when still in the meeting place, he was interrupted uh -huh. by a man who was deeply disturbed and yelling out, What business do you have with us, Jesus? Nazarene, I know that you are too, and I know you are the Holy One of God. You come to destroy us. Jesus said, shut him up. Mm. <laughs> See, when the enemy begins to speak to you, I'm not going to use the pleasant word that Mark used in the King James Version. I'm going to take you to another one that says with more confidence. He says, shut up. Because even if it was on the Sabbath day, see, even on a Sunday, the enemy had come in the midst of the church where he was actually teaching with authority. But the first thing he did was recognize who he was. Yes, yes, I know who you are. I know who you are. And they knew who he was. See, the enemy already knows who you are. Mm -hmm. He knows who you are. He knows your weaknesses. He knows what, how to push your buttons. Yes, how to, he knows how to tear you up. The enemy already know. But Jesus could not let him say a word. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you just got to say, shut up, devil. Right. Mm -hmm. shut up. Especially when he's leaning on your ear. And he's beginning to tell you to do things that are not of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Especially in those times. Hallelujah. An unclean spirit in the midst of it. How many you see that in the midst of it? That he had came to church. Dressed up. Yeah. On the Sunday. Sunday. Mm -hmm. When Jesus was speaking. So you know if he came when Jesus was speaking. Right. That he'll come when I'm speaking. Right. Or when you speaking. Hallelujah. That he'll show up in the midst of it. But I want you to see the miracle and all. The supernatural power of God. That he recognized. The unclean spirit in the man because it was speaking through his behavior. It was speaking through his character. It was speaking through him. And this is what happened to you. You ever had this happen? You want to say one thing and something else comes out. Come on here. Oh, you preaching. You want to tell somebody a piece of your mind. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. piece you got left. You want to tell somebody a piece of your mind. Yeah, and you go to them with it. You got all the words in your mind that you're going to say to them. You got your mind yeah, made yeah. up. There ain't nothing but the enemy coming in yeah, and tell you. Yeah. I'm going to tell them a piece of my mind. I'm going to yeah, tell them all about themselves. I'm going to tell them all about it. I'm going to even talk about them. The mama, the oh, daddy. Come on. <laughs> come on now. Come on. The whole family. The mama and them. I'm going to get all up in their business. And the dog. But how many of you know that in the midst of that, if you had any touch with the Holy Spirit, that your whole conversation yeah. changes once you get into the presence of that person? Right. Yep. <coughs> 
on the Sabbath day. Here he was. He told him to shut up. He told him to get out of here. The afflicted spirit threw the man into a spasm, protesting loudly, and got out. Everyone there was inclusive and buzzing with curiosity. What's going on here? A new teaching that is said. He shuts up defiling demonic spirits mm -hmm. and sends them packing. All right. Get on up out of here. Right. Yeah, that's right. See, this was the first deliverance service. Hallelujah. Jesus had the first deliverance service on a Sunday in the synagogue. Hallelujah. When he delivered a man from an unclean spirit right in the midst of him. Hallelujah. Yeah. But he told him to shut up. But see, most of us tell him, come on. What you say? What you say? Mm -hmm. Speak mm -hmm. a little bit more. Say that again. Said, you know what? That sounds pretty good. That sounds pretty good. I sure could tell them that. I could tell them that, yeah. yeah, yeah. But they didn't pick on me, you see. Because they didn't pick on me, I got to pick on them. Hallelujah. Yeah. See, because we all we want to do is somebody do us like that. We want to do them like that. Hallelujah. And what, who we get that from? Hallelujah. The devil. Oh, I know what we say. An eye for an eye. And a two for a two. I'm going to turn the other cheek. Hallelujah. If he's slapping on this side, I'm going to let him you gonna let him slap you on the other side, and you're gonna turn that cheek that way, huh? <laughs> but most of us not didn't even come up in that series. Hallelujah. How do you get in a fight at school? Hallelujah. Because you get all mad. You get all boiling over. Hallelujah. You know what? The enemy's beginning to take over. Because once he finds an air to get in, hallelujah, he'll keep you bubbling up. He'll keep you talking that way. He'll even encourage you to go ahead on and knock him out. Yeah. Well. He'll encourage you to do that. Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. But when your character and your behavior doesn't line up with God, that's what actually happens. Most of the people that have this happens in, the, in a moment, in a twinkle of an eye, their mind was made up. And I call it what he call it that. Right in that time. That's all it takes is a second for you to make that decision. And next thing you know, you're done acting on that decision. Yes. And then you find yourself over there sitting there, Lord help me, Lord help me. I didn't really mean to slap her like that. I didn't really mean to hit him in the eye. I really meant to hit him in the knee. I really didn't mean to hit him like that hard. I didn't mean to hit him that hard. I didn't mean to hit him that hard. I didn't mean to hit him that hard. I didn't mean to. See, because the people in jail say, I didn't mean to shoot him. I didn't mean to cut him. That's right. It's just like when you speak. You say, I didn't mean to speak. But you know what the sign said? Come on now. The sign said 55. Yeah. And you just said, well, you know, I think I can get away with that. Mm. See, because this is the way most of us live, is that we think we can get away with it, even when the signs are very present. Yeah. Yeah. And this is why signs and wonders do not follow you, because you disobey the sign that's in front of you. Mm. Mm. Come on. It says 55. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm guilty, too. Mm. You know you want to push it just a little bit more. I, I think I go 60. The cop ain't nowhere around. I think I oh, let's go on 65. Oh, 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 I believe I can hit 70, 70, 70. Everybody else going fast. Huh? You see, we begin to rationalize in the midst of that. Everybody else going fast. Everybody else passing me. But you ain't like everybody else. You got to have some discipline about yourself. Because huh? see, self-righteousness has taken us into a whole different level. Because we think we right. That's right. Come on. We rationalize with ourselves to go 70. Yeah. When the sign says 55. Yeah. We were so glad when they moved it up to 65. Yeah. So now we can go yes, 75. Yeah. <laughs> come on now. Come on, come on, people of God. I know you ain't just going. Some of y'all like, I'm going 60 because I really don't want to go over the speed limit. Yeah. <laughs> 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 But when you get the enemy speaking on your ear telling you to go ahead on, some of us get up to 90. Mm. Long as the cop ain't around, because we don't want to see that. But that's what the enemy keeps on icking you to go ahead on just a little bit further. Taking it just another step further. He wants you to go just a little bit faster. And that's the time you need to tell him to shut up. Yeah. And get on up out of here. Because you got to recognize when it's the enemy that's beginning to talk to you. Yeah. See, in Jesus' days, every evil spirit was considered, even by many Jewish teachers, to be numerous and to be powerful. Hanging around everywhere, doing whatever they could to inflict trouble and suffering. 
So here we are and coming up in the midst of the synagogue. Jesus. On a Sunday. Mm -hmm. Why would the enemy want to come to church on a Sunday? To keep you from getting in the church. Amen. See, the devil is opposed to Christianity, but he isn't opposed to church out of it. He don't mind you coming to church. Right. He don't mind you giving God a praise every now and then. Mm -hmm. He don't mind you shouting. He don't mind you. Oh, just singing those songs so beautiful. You know how you do, Miss T. You just sing, oh, glory to God. I wish I could sing like that. But anyway, he don't mind you doing the singing. He don't mind you getting them A's in school, see? Uh-oh. He don't mind you going all, all through college. He don't mind you going taking all them college courses. He don't mind you doing all those things. But what he wants to do is take your focus on yes, that's what right. God has for you. There you go, sir. He wants to get his focus on you. Because guess what Jesus said? Jesus said, I came to destroy the works of the enemy. Yep. Because he already knew that the enemy was going to be trying to get you. Because mm. yes. he already had his place, right? Lucifer already had his place. He already been up heaven. He already knows how, how glorious it is. Hallelujah. But if he can just get you to change your mind. Misery loves company. He just gets you to just look around just a little. Take your mind off of where you're going. Hallelujah. And put your mind on your situation right now. See, because many, many, many selfishness, hallelujah, and self-centered people have gotten into a place where the enemy has begun to speak to them and they don't know how to tell them to shut up. Shut up. All right. Come on, Pastor. The miracle in shutting them up, the supernatural power that you take authority yeah. in Jesus' name, shut up. That's right. You have the authority. You have the ability to shut him up and get him out. Hallelujah. See, because he should recognize you when you enter your presence. Hallelujah. If you walk into a place where the enemy is present, where unclean spirits are present, they should recognize who you are. Amen. And should be saying, I know you, Holy One. I know you're a child of God. But no, know what he said? Oh, that go my other. Oh, no. Mm. Oh, friend. oh, that go my friend coming in now. <laughs> because we sit there and we listen to what he has to say. We rationalize. See, because I think the mind is a good hiding place for people. People like to hide inside the mind. They don't tell you what they're thinking. But the Lord knows what you're thinking. Oh, yes. Yes. Because we hide inside of there. Because when we look at people, you know, like we look now, we're like, what is that man talking about up there? Mm. Little short self, no hair. What? See, our mind goes all kinds of places. But our focus should be on God. Yeah. Because we really want God's supernatural power to be activated in here. That when we walk into a room that we recognize that unclean spirits are in there. Hallelujah. Even amongst our friends. Don't try to get along with them when you recognize it on your friend. But how many of us will encourage the friend? Hallelujah. How many of you will talk your friends up out of there? How will you tell them the friends to tell the devil to shut up and come on up out of there? How many of you will help them walk up out of that situation? Amen. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Amen. I got amen on this side. Amen. They had amen on this side. Well. <laughs> For the struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of darkness, against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. It's not about you fighting with someone else, as the enemy would have you to do. But the battle takes in the spirit, in the word, in your mind. Where he begins to talk to you. That's what I'm talking about telling them to shut up. It's in your mind. Yes, yes. When you go to thinking that way. Jesus. For God said, I call that you would, would prosper even if your soul prospered. Yes. You need to speak the word. Speak those positive words into your life. Hallelujah. Because we really want to activate the word of God in our lives. Hallelujah. Because yes. we want to be like Jesus. Hallelujah. We want to come to a place where we know, hallelujah, that hallelujah, in the midst of all of this, hallelujah, that we come to give God glory, honor, and praise for all that he's done in our lives. Yes. Amen. You see on this day, hallelujah, that we're talking about here in Mark, hallelujah, in the 21st verse, hallelujah, a memorable day, Jesus took possession of both the Sabbath and the synagogue. 
Amen. Since he was Lord of both. Amen. Come on, come on, come on, come on. See, because here we go. We go with, with saints that don't have confidence. All right. That don't have boldness anymore. When the last time you see a bold saint, a bold child of God, FG. that walked up in the midst of a situation, hallelujah. You know, like we get ready to fight, you like, bring it on. That's what I'm talking about. Hold me, hold me, girl. Don't let me see. Go you never got to that place. <laughs> That's all right. It'll, it'll come back. But you've never been to that situation before. Well, you had to get out. Well, that got your attention now. <laughs> I'm trying to get your attention because I want saints to be bold again. It's time for us to be bold again. Now when it's dark, hallelujah, when death is all when things are going on out there, now is the time for your light to shine. Even in the school, it's time for your light to shine. Because you're going to get to those colleges where they're already beginning to kill people on the campuses. Hallelujah. But when you get up in boldness, God has to bag you up. When you begin to speak his word in a situation, God has to bag those up. Okay, I know why you don't say it. I know why you don't say anything. Because of where you've been or where you come from. Most of us look at our past and let it hold us hostage to our future. We look at what we've done before, what people have called us, and we don't have the boldness anymore. We're scared to tell the devil to shut up. Because we've been listening to him so long. You know, we rationalize and say, he might be right. He just might be right. Because see, now, nowadays when we preach about hell, hallelujah, some people are beginning to agree with this. They're like, well, I'm already going through hell. I got everything against me. My bills ain't paid, hallelujah. I'm struggling in life. I'm already living in hell. See, some people don't even be under reverence God, hallelujah, because they don't even see the effects of God in their lives. Jesus. Come on, how do people live like that? Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Well, we can tell you about heaven. As soon as we speak about hell, it doesn't even phase people anymore. Mm. Hell doesn't so, even phase them so anymore. They're not even afraid. They're not afraid of going to hell because they figure they're living in hell already. That's called self-centered. Because you'd rather look after yourself. You know, even, even when you're married and you, have a, and you have a relationship, the first thing you look at is what a person is not doing for you. Hmm. Not what you should be doing in a relationship. You look at what they're not doing for you. Hallelujah. Many marriages have failed because people looked at what they wasn't doing for you. Not what you should have been doing. As a husband, as a wife, what should you have been doing? Hallelujah. Not what they were not doing for you. In a relationship, you got to show yourself friendly before you want to call somebody a friend. Hallelujah. Amen. But if you always put yourself in there, you're looking at the faults of the other person. That's right. Over and over again, we look at faults and faults and faults. He's a, these are things that the enemy begins to breathe in our lives yep. and begin to speak to us. And, and you need to tell him just to shut up. We need to get into that word of God and get boldness. Amen. Boldness. Amen. Boldness. Amen. Confidence. Amen. And that comes from the word of God. Yes, yes. For he says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. The knowledge of the word. Of the word. What happened to us? Mm. See, it's getting mighty quiet in your now. Come on, Pastor. I didn't come to, for condemnation. I did not come to condemn you. I did not. I came to get you to get you to commit. Hallelujah. Yeah. To learn how to walk with God. Hallelujah. Because I want to see the day when the supernatural power of God is being activated right here in covenant restoration. Hallelujah. When that, when that unclean spirit crosses that threshold, hallelujah, it recognizes who is in here. Yeah. Jesus I know. Ah. All I know. But who, who are you? Ah. Mm. Wow. Uh oh. Come on. Come on. Who is you? Yeah. Who are you? Who you been? Who are you? Where you been? Mm. Here you come. Oh, now you want to come. Uh -oh. <laughs> Where you been all this time? What you been doing? Mm. What you do when you ain't with us? Mm. What you do when you ain't around the people of God? Uh -oh. mm. Boy, if I could be a fly on the wall, as my mama used to say, if I could be a fly on the wall in some of these homes, hallelujah, in some of these places that people go to that say that they're Christians. And I got nothing against them. I done come, I say it again, to condemn you. That's right. 
Because wherever you go, you should be taking your light and letting it shine in the midst of it. That's if you're going in the club, hell, stop about Jesus. That's right. That's right. Yes. Not that they want to hear, but tell them about it anyway. That's right. Speak it plain. They Speak it plain. They don't convince you to get a drink. That's right. Yes. That's right. Tell me, hey. Let me convince you to drink. Tell them about the new one. <laughs> <Tell them about. laughs> because they're going to try to get you to get one drink. Come on. Right. One drink ain't going to hurt you. That's right, Pastor. They got their favorite lines for you. Yeah. That's when you got to tell them to shut up. Hallelujah. Well, maybe not like that. Yeah, just like be that. quiet. <laughs> you mind being quiet? Cause right now I'm concentrating on Jesus. Be, you mind just being quiet? See, see, I like to be quiet because be quiet doesn't have an attitude. Oh, God. Like, shut up! You say, shut up! You heard me? You heard me? I really don't like that word using my own. Shut up! But when when you got the attitude and the thought and the boldness, you can tell the enemy who you should be telling. Just shut up! That's Not, right. Come on, Pastor. Each other. But we want to shut up each other. Mm. Yeah. yeah Lord. Shut up. Down, shut up down. This is where the enemy has creeped in. <laughs> yes. Because people of God don't want to talk about God in the midst of things going on because everybody else is not talking about it. Mm. Our normalcy now is the really to get on board with the majority of what people are saying. Mm -hmm. We want to talk about the president. We want to talk about the racist. We want to talk about that crazy man running for president. What is that? Which one? Which one? Say which one? Which one? Which one? We bring up his name. We got a whole conversation going. Yeah. But let us bring up Jesus. Yeah. Let us bring up the history of the Bible. Yeah. Oh, oh. No. Red light start flashing. Anybody got time for that? Yeah. <laughs> That's what they say. Don't you know the enemy has tried to bring that spirit of unclean in us to shut us up? That's right. So we don't say anything. This is why the power of God is really not activated. Come on, Pastor. Because we don't even speak the word. That's true. That's we begin right. to agree with the enemy. That's true. When people come against us, we even begin to agree with them. Mm. But I'm telling you, it's time for you to take your coat off. Mm. <laughs> time to take your earrings off. That's right. Your wig. It's no your wig. Wigs. Wig. Everything. Don't hold me. Don't hold me. Don't hold me. Don't hold me. But see, some of y'all ain't been in a fight in a while. Right. Yeah, really. <laughs> You've been in the battle. See, y'all been learning how to do that technology thing, and you learn how to you shoot an email over there, a dirty email, and put it in capital right. letters. We learn how to fight like that. But sometimes you gonna have to use your mouth. Oh, uh, yes, you are. Yes, sir. To begin to speak the things in your life. Yes, sir. Speak that word in your life. Hallelujah. I've seen and heard the stories of people that were going to be killed. Yep. But because of God, they were not even touched. Right. Because they spoke a word of God. Right. But you know what their favorite line is? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Soon as trouble comes. Yep. 